Today we celebrate yeah. years of hard work, parents yeah. organizing in schools, school cleaners, teachers, everybody organizing together uh, to improve the health conditions within our school. Uh, and we're here today to announce that victory. Uh, but before we do, I would like to introduce Celia Green, who is one of the lead plaintiffs on the lawsuit um, that really spurred this victory. In our lifetime and in our children's lifespan, we will see these schools clean and it is fantastic. Parents organizing, NYCC, New York Boys for the Public Interest. I can't do Great. How did we have this extraordinary victory? How did we win so big? And the facts are that every person standing behind me, every person in front of me, Every parent, every concerned advocate for building safety in our schools came together with a fearless, tireless campaign to put pressure on the city to get these lights out. So what does this settlement mean? We had a 10-year timeline. We have cut that in half. Prior, prior to the settlement, you had 107 schools in what they called in progress. Those are priority schools that would be finished within the next three years. And then the balance, 543 school buildings, we're gonna to have to wait for up to eight years. With this settlement, all of the school buildings are prioritized. All of them will be done in three and a half years. 5,000 members who are handy persons, cleaners, administrative personnel in the school system, some of which are here with me today. This is an incredible victory because for us the children come first and we are the ones who have to deal with these toxic uh, you know, fixtures every single day. Yeah. Worrying not only about our health but more importantly about the health of our children. I have a 14 year old who goes to a public school and I know now that by the time that he will graduate we will be removing that last fixture of PCB. Yeah. Now, Local 78 represents 4,500 New York City, mostly New York City residents. Our members work with hazardous materials, asbestos, lead, PCBs, mercury. They work with this day in, day out. They know when they go to a job site, they have to put on a suit, and put on a mask, Mildew. and take lots of precautions, more than mildew. Right. And take lots of precautions to keep them safe. So actually, when they first heard about PCBs in the school, they came to us. Because they said, my kids go to this school. All right? My kids go to these schools. I know what I have to do to keep myself safe. When I go do this type of work, I want my kids to be safe. And immediately, we jumped in with Nilpi, with the coalition. Um, and our members are ready to do this work over the next three and a half years to do it to the highest possible safety standards to make sure that all the kids in our public schools are safe. So again, great victory. Everybody who did work on this, this was a wonderful campaign to be part of and an important campaign. Thank you very much. Thank you. Since the beginning of the proposed plan, I told DOE that 10 years was absurd amount of time to address PCBs in the school. Today's settlement sends a strong message that sometimes you have to go to distance in order to get justice. Parents, educators, legislators are grateful to New York communities for change and for New York Boys for public interest. and winning this victory on behalf of the students and the rest of the school community. 
thank you on behalf of the children. We legislators are with you in order to fight the good fight to get justice for our children and justice for parents and justice for the staff in our school. Thank you very much. This is so heartwarming to all of us because all anybody did here today was help protect children's health That's right. and staff's health. Nobody was in it for the money. Nobody was in it to fight with DOE. Nobody wanted to do this fight trying to do anything other than this. We're trying to protect our kids' health. That was it. And that's what they didn't understand for a long time in the building behind us. But I, then they said, you know, we can't get rid of the PCBs in our schools. We just can't do it. It has to be 10 years. And that wasn't good enough for us. That wasn't good enough for all of you. Because in the end of the day, my child goes to a public school, she's five years old. We did not want kids sitting amongst potentially cancer-causing agents. Is that an insane thing to think of? Yeah. Of course it makes sense. So we fought and fought, and if anybody says that people can't make a difference, well, look right here at this issue. People can make all the difference. Thank you very much, and God bless you. To the New York Lawyers for Public Interest, New York Communities for Change, 32BJ who's here, all of the advocates that have come out over the last several years to call attention to this issue. I want to thank uh, my education chair, Robert Jackson, Councilmember Vinny Ignizio, who I worked with to, to, uh, to sponsor the two pieces of legislation that we passed well over a year ago that had some of the strictest reporting requirements in the entire country regarding PCBs. Now this story, I think this is, this is a, a welcome final chapter in this sorry saga, because what we have seen over the last couple, a couple of years on the part of the Department of Education, I'm sorry, but that has been totally unacceptable. We have seen our children's health ignored now, and only through a lawsuit and months and months and months of activism did this change get won, but now emanating from the Tweed Building and City Hall is this sudden kinder, gentler attitude that they decided to change the policy and speed up these repairs. They didn't decide to do it. You decided to make it an issue, to stand up for parents, to go to court, to do everything it took. And they bend it to your will, and for that you should be thanked by every single person in this city. There were months when pregnant teachers, pregnant parents, children, and staff were in that room. Nobody knew. The OE knew. The school was never told. And then we have another school, and they said, oh, in 10 years, and there's a thousand kids. So from all of that community, or I don't have to tell them they're lying about this issue, maybe another issue, but thank you very much, and I look forward to implementation. There's no reason we should have to continuously stand on the steps of Tweed or the steps of City Hall to have is removed from our school. Right. Yeah. There are children in our public schools as young as three years old, and they are in school until at least 18. So why do we continuously have to stand on the steps to make sure that they're safe? We shouldn't. So congratulate yourselves on this hard fought victory.